Hello, welcome people who are joining us. I see lots of people logging in Thursday evening. Really lovely to have you all join us. Uh, we love to know where people are joining from. So if you want to pop in the chat uh, where you are dialing in from tonight, that's great. We love to see that. And we will let, give some time for people to join. Great, we've got someone from lovely Bristol in the West Country in Canterbury. London gang, excellent. Kent, Northampton, Bournemouth. This is great, good spread around the country. Welcome everyone, Liverpool, hi. Someone from sunny Margate, more Bournemouth, Exeter. Brilliant. We knew this was going to be a, a passion topic that lots of people were interested in. So um, just bear with us. We'll just wait a few more minutes to allow time for people to join. Someone from Coventry, Surrey, Guildford. We've got quite a spread, I think, with the panellists. I think some of us are in London. Zara, I know, is dialing in from South Africa. So bit of a spread here right Let's give it a couple more minutes oh someone's at Heathrow about to fly out of the country I don't know okay I'm just going to give it a couple more minutes welcome to those of you joining us we're very excited about tonight's event I was just saying we do love to know where everyone's joining us from so pop in the chat where you're sat tonight Okay, East London, Dorset, great. Okay, well, we'll make a bit of a start with, um, with intros as a, as a few more people join us. So I'd uh, like to extend a really, really warm welcome to everybody. Uh, tonight is our February Creative Access Masterclass, and we're gonna be talking about how we take the cringe factor out of networking, um, which I think as we come out of COVID and we start to get back into um, the world of work is definitely a topic that's really close to everyone at the moment. So, um, my name is Bibi Hilton. I'm Creative Access's Director of Communications. Um, I'm very pleased to be chairing tonight's panel. It's definitely a topic that's very close to my heart. Uh, networking something that I used to find really, really awkward myself um, and had to learn uh, to be able to, to manage it when I was running an agency. So for those of you who are new to Creative Access and perhaps haven't joined one of our sessions tonight, we are um, before so rather, we are a social enterprise and we work to enable people from community that are underrepresented across the creative sector in terms of ethnicity, socioeconomic background and disability or facing significant barriers to employment, um, help them access and progress and reach leadership in creative roles. Um, so if you've never been to a masterclass before, these are events that we hold monthly. If you take a look at our website, um, you'll be able to see the up and coming events. They are free and they range on all different types of topics. So tonight, as I said, we're going to be focusing on networking. Uh, we did a recent creative access poll and 97% um, of people in our community said they believe networking was critical to a career, a successful career in the creative industries. But 87% of you also said they hate doing it and find it really, really awkward. So hopefully after tonight with our awesome panel of experts, we can change that and make everybody feel a lot more confident about networking and navigating um, that whole world, whether it's online or in the real world. So we're very lucky tonight to be joined by three networking experts, um, experts both in the field of virtual networking, but also in the real world. So I'd like to say a huge thank you and extend a big warm welcome to Dean Webster. Um, hi, Dean. Dean is a producer and filmmaker and also a former creative access trainee. So he knows us very well. Thank you, Dean. Um, we also have Zara Easton, who is head of brand marketing in the UK for LinkedIn and Aston Brooks Ashete, who's social marketing manager in the UK for LinkedIn as well. And I will ask them to do proper intros to themselves and their roles in a minute. <clears throat> so big thank you to all of you for being here. Know how busy you all are. We really appreciate it. 
Um, and before I hand over to, their, to them to learn a bit more about them, um, just a few little bits of housekeeping. So if you have a question, and we love to have lots and lots of questions, there will be a Q&A at the end. Please pop it into the question function, not in the chat. And Kimberly on our team is going to be moderating the questions, and we will ask the most popular questions at the end of the session. Um, you can also follow live on Twitter. We'll be live tweeting at um, underscore creative access or on Instagram stories. And there will be a recording available afterwards um, if you um, so you can follow up. So um, also worth saying that tonight we're going to do a slightly different format. We're going to start with some Q&A with our panelists. There is then going to be a little bit of a kind of spotlight on LinkedIn, thanks to Zara and Aston, a little bit of a training session. And then we will come back and have plenty of time to answer everybody's questions. Um, and the questions tonight have also been submitted in advance by our audience, which is brilliant. So without further ado, I'm going to go over and get our panelists involved. So I'd love, first of all, just to start with each of you just doing a little intro to your to yourselves. Um, Dean, should we start with you? Yeah, sure. So good evening, everyone. Um, I am Dean. I'm a producer director in factual and entertainment television, uh, also a senior producer in development as well. So that involves coming up with ideas and pitching them to channels. Um, I'm currently working on a BBC One documentary, uh, a religious documentary, uh, but I've done stuff Predominantly for the BBC, for BBC Three, I produced and directed uh, the documentary of the Uni Racist. Uh, I also did uh, a documentary about uh, sexual abuse in the music industry called Music's Dirty Secrets, uh, all of which are still available to watch on the iPlayer. Um, and then most recently uh, created a dating show for BBC Three called Love in the Flesh, which airs in about a month's time. Amazing, thank you. We were saying getting back to dating in the real world is quite relevant, kind of mm -hmm. linked to this topic as well. Well, yeah, it's like networking is sort of like professional dating, isn't it? But <laughs> um, hopefully not as awkward. Yeah. Thank you, Dean. Uh, Zara? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I'm Zara, uh, currently uh, head of brand for LinkedIn. And um, yeah, I guess my career has always been in marketing, but started off in, in publishing then sort of moved over to, to the tech industry about three years into that. Um, and I've worked in kind of brand partnerships, I've worked in trade marketing and then really loved um, the brand side. So that's what I do now. Um, I mainly look after the UK, so running kind of um, campaigns. It could be like TV campaigns, digital campaigns. Um, and on the side of that, I really love um, developing people. So I am a rock your profile ambassador, which is quite an American phrase for, for LinkedIn. And I run rock your profile training regularly for charities, universities, um, individuals who just really want to um, understand how to use the platform better and use it more for opportunity. Um, so yeah, that's one another reason why I'm really excited to be here today um, and to, to be part of the panel. Thank you. And we're going to get a little taster. You're all going to get a little taste of that uh, rock your profile training in a bit. Um, Aston. Hi, uh, yeah. So I'm Aston. I'm currently the UK social media marketing manager at LinkedIn. Um, I've been here just over three months now, actually, so relatively new to the business. But I've worked in social for around eight years. So um, various brands. I've worked for Sainsbury's, which includes Argos and Two Clothing as well. Um, a company called Protein World. And then also started off in publishing as well, like Zara, uh, for a company called Time Inc, where I was working on their cycling magazines. And I've actually just seen in the chat that I know someone who's here, so Rizal, we actually worked together um, on a shoot for Sainsbury's. So uh, there you go, networking right there. Hi, Love Rizal. it. <laughs> Love it, we're already doing a bit of networking. Um, brilliant, well, thank you so much for joining us. Let's dive into the questions. So um, getting started, right? Networking, as, as we know from the poll that we did at Creative Access, it's one of those things that we all need to do, but sometimes it's really hard to know where to start. And I think at the moment, particularly, we're trying to you know, get back, events are starting to happen in the real world. So um, if you're new to creative industries and you wanna build your network and you know it's really important, what is your advice on how someone gets started? Dean, do you wanna talk about that kind of in the physical world? I know in film and TV, the network is absolutely critical, isn't it? 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, so the the television industry is is quite freelance, particularly in the kind of early to mid stages. So you get very kind of short to medium term contracts and have to move around a lot. So you're often, you know, I've worked at like maybe four or five different organisations in one year. So you have to rely on that network to sort of be able to find the next job and then the one after that too. So, I mean, back in the day before COVID, it used to be great because um, organisations like the Royal Television Society used to put on events. There's um, a kind of wing of it called RTF Futures, which is all about people starting off their careers. Um, and I'm sure those events will be coming back soon. Also, BAFTA would do events, and obviously Creative Access events were really helpful um, too. And, um, yeah, I get the, the importance of it you can form basically you, your network is all the people that you can contact you know in sort of in a time of need but for work or just to kind of have those professional conversations um and i think it's it's really important to be able to kind of build that network but also to do it quite confidently and in a kind of professional but fun manner um so i think this this talk today is really important because actually i mean i enjoy networking i think at the beginning it was quite daunting walking into a room of like a hundred <laughs> It seems like everybody's vying for the attention of like an executive in the room. It's like a kind of Hunger Game situation. <laughs> um, but actually, I mean, like by and large, there's, there usually is like some catering and some wine and stuff. Um, but also, you know, the, the conversations you can have can be quite fun and quite illuminating as well. So um, networking is quite good because it helps you get jobs, but also helps you kind of develop your uh, knowledge and also, uh, you know, the base of people that you you, you can work with as well. Great, thank you. Wine always helps, doesn't it? It does. Uh, Zara, what about getting started from a virtual perspective, building your network? Yeah, no, it's a great question. Um, and I was just thinking the same, that I think going to those events and you have to tell if I'm going to speak to someone, I think I just used to always feel really kind of nervous and anxious and didn't really know where to start. Um, and I think virtually, the main thing to think about is just being, I guess, quite selective of who you're reaching out to and going to them with a really thoughtful, um, a, a thoughtful approach to so thinking about what, what specifically could that person help you with? Um, and we'll go into this a bit more detail later on, but being thoughtful with, the, the, with how you ask them, um, making it as easy as possible for that person to kind of to respond um, and to start building, building your network that way. So you can absolutely reach out to people who aren't necessarily in your network um, and I would, I would just really recommend thinking it, kind of thinking it through and thinking of the way that you can make it as easy as possible for that person to get back to you as well. Yeah, I think that's really great advice. In my experience, I agree that senior people generally won't, uh, are always really willing to help and to meet with people starting out in their careers, but they are really busy. So I think you're right. Giving those kind of parameters is really helpful. Um, so a question from uh, submitted by our audience, um, a kind of question from Amy Ann Ewan that's kind of asking a, 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 along similar lines. So you kind of gone out there, you've gone to an event, Dean, you've had some wine, you've met some people, brilliant. You've made those initial connections, but then what do you do next? How do you kind of keep that going um, without it feeling awkward or without feeling like you're bothering senior people, or without it feeling really transactional? What's your advice on that? I, mean, I think it, it all starts in the conversation that you're having when you're you're with that person. I think, you know, the, the aim sort of is to get uh, a contact detail, whether it's like a telephone number or an email address, but also to kind of establish what the parameters of that future contact is. So, you know, if you're sending them emails at the middle of the night, kind of asking if you can come down to their home and, and you know, or they can mentor you and stuff like that, but you've not really had that conversation, then that sort of, I think, you know, strays across the line of inappropriate. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I think, you know, if you've got that, you, at the end of your conversation with that person, you've got that instruction to kind of, you know, follow through, whether it's, you know, drop me a line, or drop me an email, send me your CV. Um, you know, if you do that and then just kind of gently push, I mean, the important thing, I think, um, Zara, you're right, you know, people are very busy. Um, and the worst thing to get is like lots and lots of emails kind of clogging up your inbox with someone who, you know, hasn't responded immediately. Um, kind of give it a bit of time, but also, you know, acknowledge the fact that once you've kind of got that person within your network, they're sort of there, not forever, but, you know, they're there for, certainly for the immediate future. And actually, you might not gain the dividends of that connection immediately. Um, so I think, you know, be polite, um, you know, and use the bit of charm and personality that you've done in the, the initial conversation, um, but then kind of, you know, use it to maybe reach out every every couple of months or so. 
Because the thing is as well, like as you're extending your network, that person is also gaining, you know, their network is building too. So there's a lot of people in everybody else's network. And, you know, something I think is quite interesting is that I recruit occasionally and I don't, you know, it usually comes out of the blue and I don't know what I'm looking for until I'm looking for it. So, you know, if you someone sends me an email last week, uh, but I'm looking for a runner or researcher next week, you know, it, it just ha- it's helpful to just keep kind of, uh, showing that person that you're there but I think you know it feels I think that it should feel natural when you're starting to um pester <laughs> I think that's such a good point isn't it that and that's it was a really good segue to the next question which was um a question from Aish and from Hannah which is around I think that you often feel that you are asking someone for something whether that's just like some advice or meet for a coffee and that somehow you need to offer them something in return Um, And I think that point around, well, you're trying to extend your network, but they're also extending their network. So there is some value in it for them um, as well, even if they're very senior, I think is such a good point. And the question, um, and Aston, I'll maybe ask this to you, when you've just graduated and you're starting out, I think you can feel like actually I have nothing in return to offer someone very senior. So what would be your advice that maybe you're approaching them through LinkedIn as to how you kind of word that? Do you feel there is an expectation that you have to offer them something or how do you what do you kind of feel about that yeah for sure I think first of all that's definitely like a mindset thing everybody has something to offer someone and even if you've just come out of uni you still have a different perspective you still have a different upbringing perhaps you're from a diverse background that they're not like you you have skills that they might not have so you always have something to offer so go in thinking that remembering that and having the confidence to back yourself um And of course, yes, you might have just come out of university and you've only, you know, had a two weeks worth of work experience or none and and you're looking for work experience, but you can still tell them what you've achieved so far. You can you can ask people sort of what you're hoping to achieve and your ambitions and really sort of open the conversation that way. And if they can see that you're a passionate, driven, ambitious person, that in itself is enough. That's you showing them that you have something to offer and offer of their business or whatever it may be that you want from them yeah oh, I think that's that's really really good point um I think that you know it is kind of transactional but I think we all just shouldn't worry so much about it and and like Dean says that transaction doesn't always have to be that, re- that reciprocation doesn't have to be immediate it might be like years down the line that somebody suddenly in your network um you know is I, of use can I just I just want to jump in on the end of that as well and I think you know, I think, you know, you, you're right, definitely, Aston, there, that you have value whether you're, the, you know, the most junior person in the workforce or the most senior, you know, the fact that that role exists means there is value behind it. But I think also you, you have to be quite realistic about what you're able to offer and what you're getting out of that interaction as well. Like, you know, I've had people come over and the, the sort of just graduated and think they're going to be like directors and executive producers. And I'm like, I'm not even an executive producer. Do you know what I mean? Like, it doesn't happen immediately. But I think, you know, if you know exactly what you're able to offer, that that should, I think, give a little bit of confidence, but also um, kind of help that interaction go a bit better. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. They're kind of like not over promising from for either party and, and just being open about that. I think that's definitely really good advice. Um, or volunteer I was just going to say as well for volunteering as well I think that really helps yeah like for example I remember that there was someone that I really wanted to connect with and I was going along to a workshop and you know she asked hundreds of people for volunteers to put out the chairs and I just went early and put out the chairs just so I could chat to her before um which obviously you know um hopefully a lot of people can do and if you have that time to give um that can go a long way yeah that's such a good point it's just even little things isn't it Zara that can make yeah difference and help you build that relationship with people um so we had a question for um from claire which aston i'm going to direct to you so um claire was saying contacting people online and finding work has been really hard in the last two years i think that's probably something that a lot of people on in have joined tonight can relate to um as particularly as everything has moved online so like those events that dean was talking about you know the last two years they haven't been happening so everyone has has been going to to online in order to do that What's your kind of top advice and tips about how you navigate um, networking virtually? I know you're going to come on to do the training about LinkedIn, but perhaps a bit more broadly than that, your kind of top tips. Yeah, of course. So I think in general, networking is essentially at its core about building relationships. And 
the more you build relationships and the better those relationships are, the more doors will open for you and the easier things will become. And those people will then have you top of mind so that if they don't have an opportunity for you, they'll think, oh, wait, Aston, she, she's great. And they'll pass your name on. So I think it's, uh, although, yes, fine, you might be wanting to find that job and you're really, really desperate to, to get a job. And I know how hard it is at the moment. Um, I think you kind of need to go into it as a ex expect rejection and don't be put off by rejection. But even though you might not get offered a job by one person, just building that network and them knowing who you are really will help you in the future and in the long run and you might get a lifelong friend you might get a mentor out of that relationship it doesn't necessarily just have to be about the job but as I said appreciate that if you really are in that position where you need the job um that can sometimes make you panic a little bit and feel a bit frantic um obviously LinkedIn I'm biased but get yourselves on LinkedIn because that's a great way virtually to meet people and actually have a virtual coffee with somebody that's that's still possible have a virtual drink you know put put some time in their diary even if it's 10 minutes every now and again um to just keep keep in touch with people I think that's a, a really good way and that's what I do I have a mentor and we have a coffee every every six weeks I think it is and we've just got a recurring invite in the diary um and I think we mentioned it earlier people really do want to help and if they if they can they will so don't don't be afraid to approach people because we've all been in that position. We've all had to start somewhere. Um, and if I can help somebody, then I will do my best to do that. Um, and I think be yourself as well. So really be authentic, be true to who you are um, in the whole process. And I think they're probably my top top tips. That's awesome advice. And I I think I really agree with you. I think that also you talked about kind of just putting in like a 10 minute slot. I think that if you say, if you approach someone whether that's online or in the real world, a senior person that you really want to connect with and say, look, I just want 10 minutes just to pick your brains about something or to get your advice or to have a coffee or whatever. I don't think people say no to that. I think when they're busy, they can find 10, 15 minutes. I think sometimes it's off putting when they think, oh God, it's going to be like a two hour meeting and I'm really busy. Um, so I think framing it like that, I think that's great advice. Um, right, let's get down to real pragmatic tips for our audience. Um, got a question from Asha, which I'm going to direct to you first, Dean. Like, literally, what are your tips? You're in, in an event, you want to speak to someone. How do you actually go up to them cold and start a conversation? What do you do? Um, oof, right, well, I think, firstly, the fact that that person is at an event, you know, means that they are there expecting to sort of have those kind of conversations. So I think you know, the, the bar is already set, you know, there's sort of, there's a, an understanding there that this is okay. And I think you sort of do just have to kind of bite the bullet and, and step over and, and kind of, you know, introduce yourself and, and, and let the conversation go from there. You know, I, I used to really like the creative access events that happened at Channel 4 because there'd be like four like TV big wigs and 200 interns. And then you <laughs> see just like people hovering and stuff. And I just used to love it because it was like really just like bizarre kind of, I felt like a bit like David Attenborough, just like watching like <laughs> bees around honey. Um, but I think, you know, the, the things which will make you feel a little bit more confident and also you just sort of, need to, if you do your research beforehand about the people who are going to be there, so you sort of know what sort of things to ask and what to talk about. Um, and like, you know, in, in television, it's like broadcast magazine and stuff like that, variety, which will tell you stuff which has happened in the news, you know, recently. Um, so, for example, if you saw someone from like ITV Studios, you could go up and ask them about Love Island moving from CBF to, to, to NBC Universal. And that's just happened today. So that show you're engaged, but also show you've got something to talk about. Um I think also like have a conversation like networking isn't about you like selling yourself you're not having a you know a barraging someone with like a conversation you know uh, a one-sided conversation it's like it is about having a conversation so like have something that you want to find out and, and just be curious as well I think that's sort of the best thing it also helps because people love to talk about themselves like I love to talk about myself so when people ask me about you know my shows and stuff like that I think I've probably got like 100 stories I'll just lock and load another one and out it'll come um but then sort of know what you want to get out of it. So they, they, you have got a beginning, middle and end of that interaction. Um, and whether it's, you know, just want to you know grab a coffee and chat a little bit more about the industry or, you know, send over my CV to see what you think or some pointers or to share it around, etc. And know how to get out of that, because I think that also gives you something to aim for. And hopefully it will make it feel a little less uh, stressful. 
Oh, that's great advice. I love the way of like doing, it's doing your prep work, like everything in life and kind of plotting that out and doing the research and the individual. That's really, really great advice. Um, Zara, what about that same question in an online world? How do you kind of break the ice and, and yeah. people? Well, I think some similar principles apply. So we always use the an analogy that at these you know events, you wouldn't walk up to someone and just hand them a business card and, and not say anything. You, uh, you, you have to build that kind of conversation first. So if you're if you're reaching out to someone that you don't know, always customize your LinkedIn request if you want them to kind of accept you as a connection. So never just send a blank um, invite out, even if it's someone that you you know might know a little bit. Best practice is always to send that invite so they know why you want to connect with them. Um, and I, I think it's something like eighty percent of the time, then people do because you've just been really specific and you've put um, thought into why you want to connect with that person. Um, and then, you know, as part of that, you're then part of their, their connections and mutual connections and you can start um, engaging with their content and, you know, and chances are they'll then see your stuff and you'll start to kind of build that relationship. And then there's no reason why you can't reach out to them, reach out to them again. So, yeah, I think it's kind of like in, in a weird way, similar things do, do apply. Um, and actually, you can then reach out to people from all over the world. You're not just limited to people who are there physically in an event. You can then open it up and think, OK, what? companies would I love to work for or is there anyone really inspirational I'd love to talk to or just someone that you think is going through the same thing even if they've you know got similar goals um they're, they're kind of people that we, we would recommend for, for everyone to connect with yeah that's great advice um and those kind of same principles of doing your research in advance and, and finding those connections um <coughs> Dean, just kind of back to you again. Have you got a good example of a, you know, it's, it's a little bit overlapping with the last question, but of an, an icebreaker question? <laughs> Plus, you know, I had time to think about this, so I still haven't thought of one. <laughs> I, mean, I, th I think the, the thing is, it's, it's, okay. it is about the individual and about that circumstance and that situation. Like, for once, I was at um, the RTF Future Summer Party, which was at like, I think Centre Point in London, very nice swanky bar. And the person who uh, was at the time working for Endemol but created the million pound drop was there. Um, and I sort of knew that. And I went over to him and was like, I just need you to tell me how that idea came to fruition. And like, I think he appreciated it because, um, it, when, first, because he's got a great story that you could tell he's told a hundred times and he just loved to get it out again. Um, but also just showed a little bit of like, you know, kind of foresight and planning and, and a bit of interest and in kind of now as well. So I, I don't think there's a, like a, an ex a one icebreaker question, which is just perfect, um, because I think it, it just has to be besp bespoke. Yeah, it makes me, this is a bit of a dated reference, but it makes me think in Bridget Jones of that scene where she's kind of networking and introducing people and she's like, blah, blah, loves horse riding. And, you know, <laughs> um, I love that scene. Yeah, it's, it's really spot on. Great that might work. <laughs> um, so the other end now of the kind of conversation or the or the engagement that was the icebreaker bit. And Asan, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with you. Nicole was asking. So then, how do you close the deal? Right, you've kind of met them, you've had a chat, whether that's in the real world or or online. Um, you've built that rapport, and then how do you close the deal to kind of actually get down to brass tacks of what you actually need from that individual? What's your advice there? Yeah, so I think you should always just be open and honest and transparent with them about what it is that you want. Um, but again, as I mentioned earlier, you sort of you can tell whether you've built a rapport up with someone enough to kind of then go in with, I want a job or please be my mentor, I think. So you can kind of get the vibe from them. But yeah, I think literally just set out what it is clearly that you want from them. So if it is, I would really like you to be my mentor um, and I would like xyz from this mentorship so can you mentor me to find a new job can you help me um get a promotion or things like that so i think that's really important um and then just yeah say i would like to keep in touch with you maybe find out what's the best way for them to stay in touch like is it a 10 minute call catch up every every four weeks is it a coffee in real life every now and again um or even do they just want to email like i think be really kind of um responsive to their how they would like to communicate um and i yeah i think you just say you want to keep in touch be honest about what it is you want from the relationship and then sort of go from there 
great thank you i just i just want to quickly jump in there i yeah, uh, ask you who wants to jump in go on I, went, I did obviously do loads of these events pre-covid um and then had the idea to get these business cards made which i used to hand out at the end i've just found one here i don't know if you can see it it says tv's dean webster <laughs> and then <laughs> And then on the back, it's got all my details and like a link to my CV and telephone number and stuff like that. And people used to love it because the business cards feel quite kind of old and antiquated. When yeah. you're in a face-to-face kind of like setting, it's quite a handy way of getting all that information over. Um, and I love it was, that. It, it's quite retro. It's very retro. I, I accidentally ordered 5,000. I didn't really <laughs> understand uh, how many. And I, they're all over the house now. And I've been giving them out to my friends. I mean, birthdays and Christmas cards, they're bookmarked. So, um, but yeah, I think that's quite a nice idea. So, oh. <laughs> was, Love it. Oh Everyone is doing this call. You're getting a free yeah, Christmas card tonight. One, Anuska in the chat's got one of my Okay, well, cards. that is actually a really good segue to the next question from Nitu, who's in your aspiring in your sector, Dean. Um, Nitu says, I'm an inspiring writer and director but want some advice on when to start introducing um, themselves as that. So is there, like, should you have some experience under your belt before you start saying I'm a writer and director or what would be your view on that? I mean, I, I think on one hand, I think you, you don't want to kind of scare somebody off by kind of, you know, pre- presenting yourself as the new Jed Mercurio, but without any kind of credits or anything like that, you know, you've not written a line of duty before. Um, but I think actually it, it, it's also, on the other hand, I think you should be upfront and honest about what you want to do and where you want to go. But I think the difference is being um, a little bit more pragmatic about what you want to get out of that conversation. Because if you're chatting to someone who's, you know, works at a channel uh, and you tell them that you're, a, you're an aspiring writer and director, you know, they're not going to give you a 10 part series on BBC One and, you know, hand over 10 million pounds. But they could, you know, put you forward or connect you with someone who is at the BBC Writers Room project, uh, or that the, you know, Channel Four had recently done something for new writers as well. So, you know, you can still go forward with that, but you, you know, should just be quite realistic about what you want to get out of that interaction. Um, so yeah, I, I would have it though. Don't tell someone that you want their job because that will <laughs> that will definitely put them off. <laughs> yeah, I think like Gas was saying earlier as well, people want to help people as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think once you've got that kind of form connection, I think if you're, you know, if there's an opening available and you or you see something, there's a, a kind of an opportunity. It's definitely it's always worth asking. Definitely, and I think as well, like I, I, I said earlier, I might contradict myself here, but you know, you should have an endpoint in mind, but also just kind of go with the like the waves and the flows of the conversation because actually, you know, you can't predict what someone's about to tell you, um, and they might, you know, be able to connect you with someone or tell you about something which you didn't even know of. So just sort of be open to the opportunity that that networking conversation can give. Yeah, absolutely, and just just to add something quickly to that. I once went for a job interview and uh, I didn't get the job but I then sort of stayed in touch with the person that interviewed me and as a result of that he then passed me on to a new another job at a different company and I got the other job at the different company so it really is just you will get rejection you will face the lights keep going off off in here sorry um (laughs) but just you never know who remembers you and it's really worth just building those connections all the time yeah, I think that's such a good point, isn't it? It's like you're in it for the long run. It's not necessarily about what you're going to get from that interaction or that relationship next week. You know, at the end of the day, we're all hoping to build our careers for, for the um, over a long period of time. Um, just a couple more questions. And then I want to hand over to Zara and Aston to um, give us some, some tips and advice on how to build our LinkedIn profiles. Um, so just a, a question now about kind of, getting back in the real world and actually for all of you really um you know I think we're all going to be getting back in rooms in the next month and going to these kind of events and and meetings so you know I think we're all going to be feeling a little bit of social anxiety after the last two years um what advice would you give to people around that you know how to how to overcome that how to avoid awkward silences how to um, kind of, you know, keep the imposter syndrome down and, and face some of those situations. Maybe, Zara, should we start with you? But I'd love to hear from all three panellists. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
I think going into these events, you, yeah, I think the, the things that you forget is that everyone's in the same boat. I think because funny enough, when we went, even when we started going back to the office that's, that Aston's in right now, uh, everyone keeps saying, I've forgotten how to have a conversation, like, I've forgotten how to speak. And actually, like there is always that kind of common thread that people are all coming from, from the same spot. Um, and something that I feel like I've done in the past, if I know that I'm going to be someone who I don't know that well, and this probably sounds very geeky, but sometimes I actually write a list of questions on my phone. So that it's just if I've literally got if I run out of things to say, I have it to hand because I know for me personally, if I'm more prepared, I could just then <laughs> have that. And I kind of have it in my back pocket to think, right, there's going to be lots of people I don't know. What are the sort of things I can talk about um, and have, have, a, have a little cheeky look at that? Um, and, and usually you're going to an event as well that, people, you know, there is a, usually a theme, isn't there? And there's a common thread and you can start speaking to people and then, you know, own it as well. When you've you know, finished speaking to someone, it's been like, cool, good to speak to you. I'm going to go grab one of those canapes or something you know so I think yeah have only your kind of conversations as well yeah that's really great advice about doing a few notes I definitely have done that before I think also you you're making a really good point that you know just because they're a really senior person doesn't mean they've got any less social anxiety or feeling less awkward about going to an event sometimes it can be worse because you know like to Dean's point you know that there's 200 interns who are clamoring to talk to you it can be as overwhelming so I think that's that's such a that's quite a leveler isn't it I think that's a really good good point to bear in mind Dean, okay. Dean what about your thoughts on that same question getting back out there in the world I mean yeah just listening to and um, Cesar I've created actually just now and then my three P's of networking Ooh. um I know right wow um the first one I think is you know prepare so you know know who you're going to see know what you want to talk to them about and and you know what's been going on in their world recently I think practice like everything you know practice makes perfect so you know if things don't go well with the first person you know you've at least got that experience and you, you learn from that as well and I think the final one is be patient um which is you know you don't have to kind of bowl into things kind of immediately you know you can let give things a bit of time to kind of breathe um but also kind of be patient with the outcomes of those networking opportunities as well because things aren't just going to you know I, d I don't think and you guys correct me if you're wrong but I don't think you don't get usually get jobs at networking events like you build a connection and then that's what leads to yeah. you know a job or you get kind of you know moved on to someone who can create an opportunity for you as well so you have to be patient um you know in the run-up to but also after you've made that that connection too I love that the three P's of networking that you just you that. came up to that. that on the yeah. spot crikey <laughs> <laughs> I wrote that before right. this guy's genius <laughs> <laughs> that is right that, I, don't, I think that is a great way to just bring to close this first section of this um, session tonight um, so that was great discussion what we're going to do now is we're going to hand over to Zara and Aston who are going to um, give us a little bit of insight into how to um, rock your LinkedIn profile and um, so just that's going to be the next section but please um, stay listen there's going to be absolutely brilliant um, advice and content and then we're going to come back at the end I can see lots of questions coming up on the Q&A um, so then there will be plenty of time to have all of those questions answered to all three panelists are going to stay with us so over to Zara and Aston and then we'll come back for a Q&A shortly thanks guys thank you all okay thank you. can you see can you see the beginning I can see it. Right. <laughs> Everyone else can. Um, perfect. So yeah. Um, hi. Thanks for all uh, sticking with us, and hope you're hope you're enjoying the chat so far. So yeah, myself and Zara, as LinkedIn uh, colleagues, are going to take you through what we like to call rock your profile. Um, so in today's session, we are going to cover a range of things. So getting to know LinkedIn, uh, best practices for LinkedIn profiles top tips for building a community um, and sort of a bit on how to share content and find inspo. And then we also are going to offer up some uh, chances to win some LinkedIn premium subscriptions. And we know that probably not everyone on this call has LinkedIn. Some people might be beginners. Some people might be, you know, expert professional content creators on LinkedIn. So it would be um, good to just get a bit of an understanding and maybe you could pop it in the chat on what exactly you use LinkedIn for and whether you do use LinkedIn. Anyone in the chat? I can't, don't know if I can see anything coming through. Don't be shy. 
It can be. I don't use LinkedIn and I don't know what LinkedIn is. Yeah, what is LinkedIn? <laughs> Read inspiring stories, uh, trying to build a network, build up the profile, go on LinkedIn to search, search for jobs. Yes, they use it. Beginner, finding jobs. Oh, yeah, loads coming in now. I use it for my ego burst. I mean, yeah, don't we all really? Perfect. Thank, thanks for all of your comments. So it seems like uh they're varying answers and varying ideas on how you how you actually use linkedin um so from our perspective there's sort of probably four key areas that people go on linkedin um for reasons they go to linkedin so that's connections which as we've just been talking about for the last sort of 40 minutes it's really building those networks whether it's staying in touch with your kind of former classmates former colleagues or business partners um, job searching, it is a, such a great job site. So you go on there and there's all the jobs in the world on there, essentially. Um, and you can see salary insights, you can see um, trending jobs and everything like that. Information, so we do have daily curated news, um, content from thought leaders, content from creators um, on all different walks of life, whether it be sustainability, whether it be diversity, inclusion anything you want to read about really and then also learning so we have got LinkedIn learning and again pretty much any any course whether it be learning SEO whether it be learning how to be imposter syndrome sort of all different types types of activity um so just a bit more of an overview on LinkedIn as a platform. We have a whopping 722 million members worldwide. And I think that is growing. It might even be slightly more than, than that since these slides were made. Um, 51 million companies. So just see how much opportunity is on there with all those amazing companies. 40 million jobs, um, 36,000 skills. Well, you can see all the rest. I won't, I won't dwell on the numbers too much, but it's a really, really powerful tool essentially to help connect you um, to the world of work help connect you to op opportunities and people um, yeah with a huge professional network so in terms of connect connecting to opportunity our essentially our our purpose as a brand is to really help everybody that is in the global workforce we want to connect everyone in the global workforce to opportunity um, so it's about building your professional community and professional can mean different things so you can be professional when you're a social media manager you can be professional when you're an artist you can be professional when you're the ceo of a huge bank in in the center of the city so it means very different things to very different people um, and LinkedIn really is a place and a community for everybody. Um, so just again commenting in the chat on a scale from one to five uh, I think I know Bibi mentioned at the start that not everyone loves networking but so we can get more of a more of an idea of the group we have here how much do you like networking so one to eight five is love. Okay, so we've got quite mixed. We've got three, quite in the middle. One, can't remember what one, one is hate. Mm. So we've got quite a lot of ones actually, which is why <laughs> you're all here. But everybody looks like they're sort of in the middle. We've got a few fours yeah. as well and fives. Um, and for, for those of you that have sort of said five, what, what is it that you love? And then for those of you that have given it a big old one, what, what is it that you hate? Um, just put that in the chat as well. Um, but as yeah, as you're as you're typing in, we we have conducted our own research as as LinkedIn um, with YouGov, and it was really split sort of 50 50. So 50 percent of people really like networking, or maybe not really like they like networking, <laughs> um, and then 50 percent of people see it as a necessary evil. So real mixed bag, um, and I think that's that's sort of why we're here to help, why Zara is now going to come on to how you can build your LinkedIn profile to give you the best chance when you do get do get out there and active networking in the virtual world. Definitely. So, um, yeah, I mean, 
typically um, when we run these kind of training sessions we have an hour long kind of immersive thing about you know all best practices but we've, we've only got a short time today so we've just sort of cherry picked the best um the best parts um and the more, more crucial elements especially from the kind of networking perspective um and yeah for those of you who are really new to linkedin you're gonna probably um there'll be a bit more to take in and that, but we can kind of always hope that there's something that people are going to take away from the kind of more uh intricate training details um, and at a base your profile is essentially your digital business card um, and it's you know you, if you for example if you're looking for a job your cv is a, a document which you know you can then make it more bespoke you can kind of change your story slightly you want your linkedin profile to be a base which is um, generic enough that it can work with all your cvs but also tells your story um, and there's just also that opportunity to be um, more creative with it as well and add, add, you know, links, add more of your creative stuff, which we're going to go on to go on to. Um, but the reason why we kind of wanted to start on uh, uh, profiles in particular as well is because this is what people are going to see when you're reaching out to them. If you're reaching out to people networking um, you know, or if you're just growing your connections on LinkedIn or if you've met them, they're going to go and look at your profile. So you want your profile to be telling the best possible story about yourself. Um, so first of all, the headline. So I always like to talk about this because it's a, the piece of inventory on LinkedIn that people actually see the most because when you're in the news feed and you're using it and you're commenting, this is what people always see. Um, arguably mine isn't the most creative and you'll notice that in the next slides I have, um, Put, I use a lot of examples of my own profile because then I can be really critical of myself and not be critical of Aston. So I'm just put, putting my, my slides there, my uh, profile there. But essentially, you know, you could really um, you know, add copy there so people fully understand um, who you are and what you're about. Um, or you can see um, one of our change makers for LinkedIn last year, who's one of our kind of, um, yeah, kind of in, was kind of an influence for our brand. She she really you know adds you know some of her creds. She adds. Um, you know some of the kind of uh, more charities she works for as well and it doesn't mean you need to list everything but that's your chance to tell the story that you want to tell um, and even if you're a graduate how can you use that to um, just really start to um, tell yeah tell it and make it really clear as well so when you're thinking about your whole profile in general we always like to say think about I think about the three words that you want to um, use to describe you, you and your brand and that might sound really kind of extreme if you're really you know really early on or you know just finished college or university or whichever stage you're at um but you can just start thinking about that and it doesn't mean you need to stick to that forever but it's just good for you to think okay well at the moment you know for example you could be wanting to go into finance so then in that case maybe you want to say that you know you, you want all your kind of three words to be about um you know that you've got the kind of uh, analytical side you know you're you know perhaps you're good with people um, and you're interested in the certain industry and just making that that kind of story super super clear and um, the other thing we'll go on to as well is um, and this is going to go into now into the about section which is one of my one of my favorite bits on the profile um is that you can you should really write your um your copy on your linkedin profile in first person a lot of people think that you should write it in third person because it keeps it really professional but what actually we found is that the more you write it in first person the more that that person then really relates relates to you relates to your story um and yeah can kind of just really get your kind of true authentic self as well and that's what i just mentioned here so your your about section so this is your prime real estate to really give your own elevator pitch it's where you can put your own spin on your experience you can describe it um what you do to someone who's completely unfamiliar with perhaps with your field or you know perhaps if they just don't know anything about you um and you can you can kind of yeah split it into different ways but i like to stick i like to usually have um you know who you are and um, i have a bit about your experience and then you know something you want to achieve or just something that you love personally doing so for example of mine i put like a bit about what i've done with my experience what I do now and then another reason why people might want to connect with me and I've spoken more about um kind of like the mentoring side and and, and the training that I do for the LinkedIn as well um and for this try and again make it as easy as possible for people to read so 40 to 100 words um writing it in no more than sort of three to five um paragraphs and yeah just make it really easy for people to digest and as I said earlier writing it in that kind of first person narrative there's so many other features on LinkedIn 
Um, so we, like I said, we could spend an hour speaking to you about it, but these are just some of our real top tips, particularly for the networking perspective. So as I said, write your headline, write a compelling uh, summary. Um, what you might want to do as well is create a custom URL. So if you some, some of you look on desktop for LinkedIn and you go and look at your profile link, you may see that you've got a string of numbers by your name because you've not personalized it. Personalize your profile link so it's really easy for people to find you because you can then um, just share your name and share what the actual the URL is. Um, and first impression counts. So, you know, if you're going to an event, you know, you usually dress up a little bit or, you know, you might put, um, you know, a new top on or something. And that's really, again, um, another place where you want to make a good first impression. Doesn't mean you need to go and get an expensive headshot. It just means can you get, an, you know, a reasonable kind of like, um, you know, semi-professional photo taken of you, you know, maybe not one from, you know, the old holiday archives with a cocktail in your hand, you know, maybe just one that kind of represents yourself in your work life um, and just helps build that um, kind of rapport and relatability as well. And then last of all, I think a lot of people are starting to use this feature now is to be able to record your name. So this is from a name pronunciation perspective, but actually people are using it in really interesting ways. They're almost using that 10 seconds that you get just to actually introduce themselves, you know, saying like, for example, my, uh, my manager says, um, hi, my name's Doraine, like Lorraine, um, thank you for visiting my page. And I think that's just a really nice spin and people kind of already get his personality from that as well. So that's a real whistle stop stop stop, stop tour on profiles. There's loads more we could say here, but actually this is kind of then, this is about you finding your base and everything that I just said about the way you tell your story in your about section in your headline, think about that for all of your experience. Or if you don't, you know, even if you're starting out at university or studying, um, even if you've just got volunteer experience, always think about what, you, what is the purpose of someone reading that and how does it tell the story that you want to tell? This is your opportunity to tell tell the story that you want to tell um building community so i feel like we did speak about a few of these tips already so some of them we might whiz through but essentially on linkedin what you'll find is that there when you build your connections and your networks you have your kind of first degree and then you have the connections of those first degree connections and the connections of those connections um, and that just means that when you're connecting with someone that actually does open up yourselves to their connections as well um, and what this means really is that everything that you then post on LinkedIn can reach a lot of people who aren't even in your immediate network. So it's just something to consider. Um, and yeah, there's there's kind of the kind of always the having the mindset that each time you connect with someone new, um, you're going to be kind of extended into their networks as well. I already spoke to this. I spoke to this earlier, but when thinking about um, you know, expanding your network, as I said, who should you reach out to? What should I say? always think about um yeah always think about those people that you can relate to people that might be um, working at a company that you want to work at people who want to have the same goals be strategic about it don't kind of reach out to um don't reach out to kind of absolutely everyone be strategic about who you're, you're reaching out to and then what should i say I, like i said earlier i think you know don't be shy you know you've got something to you know you've got something to tell that person um keep it kind of concise be thoughtful about it um, and yeah, just really explain why you want to connect with that person. And it just means that people are going to be much more um, kind of accommodating to that as well. And lastly, just, you know, if you are going to these events, you can now actually just use a QR code for your own LinkedIn profile. So if you open up your, if you've got the LinkedIn app, you open it up um, and you click into the LinkedIn app, you can very easily use a QR code now. So if you go into the search and then you kind of click, you can then kind of uh, get your own uh, kind of mini business card on as a QR code on your phone. Um, so sorry, Dean, for the 5,000 uh, cards you printed because people might be <laughs> using them, but you'll, yeah, you'll still stand out with that. Um, but yes, yeah, so that's a really easy way if you're meeting people so just to connect them to your LinkedIn profile and they've got all your information and they know your story as well. Uh, another thing that we, we've just started to introduce to, to LinkedIn is following uh, members because, you know, for example, Richard Branson, I did previously work for Virgin. Has he accepted my request? Now he hasn't. So what I've done is I've followed him instead. So I'm still getting um, getting all the insights about him. Uh, I'm still learning about the you know the culture of the company. I'm finding all the updates. I'm getting in the know, but I'm sort of seeing kind of seeing it. And that doesn't mean it doesn't really matter that he's not follow, following me back. It's actually I'm starting to kind of gain insights into that um, into that world. And that's all about growing your um, 
kind of yeah growing the content that you're seeing but also growing your insights into that particular area that you're interested in and then when you've got your kind of you know your base of your network even if you're starting off small the main thing to do then is actually it's a kind of think about it as a two-way process so the more you give to your network the more you get back so if you've connected with someone recently like and share their stuff they will likely do it the same back to you um you know there's also groups on linkedin that you can join with kind of more specific purposes so um you can join these groups you can exchange insights um and you can um yeah, get to know people that way as well and then you can give endorsements and recommendations to others on LinkedIn as well. So you can kind of endorse people for skills. Maybe there's someone that you studied with. It might be someone you volunteered with. But that's kind of a way of giving and getting back as well. And just really investing time in your connections too. Um, and so, yeah, you've got your great profile. You've got your community. Uh, what do you do now? So how do you, what do you, what content should you share? And how should you use the platform for inspiration? So there are essentially two ways to share on LinkedIn. One is a status update and one is an article. The article will feel probably a lot more advanced to some people, especially when you're starting out. But the status update is super easy. You just go onto the homepage, you um, create a new status and you can share content there. And I think the main thing here is think about it as you should either be um, you know, adding value or telling a story. And you could then, you know, post, you know, it could be an update about, it could be, you know, an update about your career, but it could also be um, you sharing like a useful article that you saw or sharing your thoughts, your perspective on something or, um, you know, starting a conversation about um, a particular topic as well. And then for those of you, you know, who are maybe a little bit more advanced and want to write articles, they are um, another way that you can essentially just kind of go into more of a deep dive. But I won't uh, kind of stick on that too long because that is a little bit more advanced. And best practices for sharing content um, is, you know, as we said about profiles, be authentic, share your own personal spin on things, post frequently. You know, I think if you were like even posting once a month, I think that's brilliant because you're kind of staying fresh in those connections that you've made. So if you've met all these people at this event and you've got them on LinkedIn, you keeping fresh on there is brilliant. Um, but there's no right or wrong way to do that because everyone's going to have different things to share. Um, and yeah, when I said, and when you do share, think about how you can add value um, start a conversation keep and just keep your audience in mind as well um, if you're looking to get high reach we've got some tips here again these are all pro kind of pro tips here so um, our advice is to have to tag um, tag people or companies include two to three hashtags and if you are publishing an article then stick to 600 to a thousand words as well um, and I really like this kind of just this post actually which was actually um by a friend but i really just liked how she kept it really simple her content the copy is really simple but it added value so you can um yeah you can really see um kind of yeah if you've learned something new about each of the platforms it's really clear it's easy to digest and i thought that was just a really nice example of just sort of sharing kind of um thinking on something um and you can also then start to, you know if you want to try and think okay well i don't know what to post about you can actually follow hashtags that you're interested in and you'll then be served more content from that so just by doing that you might see examples of things that you um yeah that you kind of think oh i quite like that um, i'm going to share that as well and people do that all the time so if you post something people will then likely post post about it as well or they kind of steal the content and post it on which is absolutely accept absolutely what people do so that's you know, good little tactic as well. So we are very nearly the end. We've got some premiums to give away. Um, I think just all of that, as I said, that was a real whistle stop tour and just some of the best practices. But three takeouts for you is, um, you know, it's your profile, your story. This is what you're going to be sharing with people when you're networking or building your, your network. So you put your own spin on it. Um, and yeah, tell the story that you want to tell and invest time in making that really clear and easy for people to understand what you want to achieve and what, and then think, oh, okay, that's why they want to connect with me. Um, build your network strategically. So really think about, okay, what are my goals? Who are people that would be good to connect with? And then just making sure that you're being really thoughtful with your kind of request and how you're asking them. Um, and another tip is that if you really want to um, kind of uh, improve what you're seeing on LinkedIn as well, and actually be having a better experience what you see in the newsfeed, which again, might be a bit pro tip, pro tip for some people is to um you know you can actually customize who you're following you can customize which hashtags you're following you can change the content that you're looking at 
it's really easy to do and that just means that you're getting the inspiration which essentially is going to really help you to then um yeah to help you then think of things to post as well so it's always thinking about what you're seeing as well as what the other people are seeing as well so that was the whistle stop tour we'll go on to the linkedin premium so actually for this um what we would like you to do in the chat is write a number from one to 100 and it's not fast as first it's just whoever guesses it on 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 the door and i what i've done is i've written on five bits of paper next to me five numbers um which you can see here don't look we're not going to try i hope you can't see it's not see through so they're written down already and in the chat if you then write down your um numbers in here then we can see who gets it first and i'll start picking picking them out um, and I appreciate we're going to see quite a few. Um, and we may, hopefully we can spot it quickly enough here, but we may well um, have to just quickly look at the chart and then confirm, but we will see how we can do. So once everyone's done it, I will then um, pick out the numbers. I was going to say, Zara, do we maybe need to do it in the chat afterwards? Because I wonder if some people might pick the same number as well. <laughs> That's very true. But I will reveal the numbers now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's no... Uh, no cheating. <laughs> Not that there would be, obviously. Yeah, reveal the numbers and then we can do the admin afterwards in terms of contacting people. Okay, that sounds perfect because I appreciate there's lots of people here. Just wait another one more minute and then um, we can see it looks like everyone's finished now. Okay, cool. So the first number of 364, that's a little bit over the 100 mark, but that could be. Um, Oh, some questions. Are that. Okay, thank you. Well, we will look at that. So I'll just let you know, students, people might be excited. If you've got that number, you can, you know, show some excitement in the chat as well. So don't feel like you need to be quiet on that. So the first number was number 40. So I don't know if anyone has that. <laughs> Someone just wrote 40. Um, the next number was 67, which is my mum's age. I don't know if she'd want me to show you that, but that's why it came to my mind. Uh, the next number I wrote down is 31 which is my, my age. I don't, I don't know why I'm sharing that either. Um, 99, because I thought we need one near the top. And 16, which is my lucky number. So there we go. Just loads of ran, ra randomly selected, but all written before, I can assure you. So we will uh, have a look. If people haven't got it on the mark, what we'll do is we'll find, um, we will find people closest to that number. So we will look in, into the, the detail of that and then we'll let you know um and you only need one number so emily if you've got 67 and you're the only person you're the first person to do that that means you will have one linkedin premium which is very exciting so we will <laughs> and art mark has got 99 okay cool well that's very exciting um and you can very much hopefully enjoy premiums and it just you know it opens up you know linkedin a little bit more to, to more learning courses you can see some more insights you can have a bit more of a stalk of you on who's you know all those people you've met at these networking events you can then see now who's uh who's uh, been there looking at your profile afterwards. Fantastic. That was absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much to you and Aston for taking us through all your pro tips. Um, I'm sure everyone feels like they learned a huge amount. So that was brilliant. We really appreciate it. And thank you also for contributing the licenses. So everyone okay. knows we've saved the chat. We've also put a marker when Zara read out the numbers. So all of you that wrote the winning numbers afterwards, <laughs> We know, um, and we will follow up with everyone separately to make sure that um, the lucky winners get their licenses. So thank you very much. Um, I can also see while um, <clears throat> Zara and Aston were presenting that we've had lots of questions come in. So um, by all means, do please keep, um, we're gonna move over to Q&A now, but do keep voting on the questions if they're questions that will, you wanna to bump to the top and please keep adding them. Um, Zara or Laura, do you mind taking this? Yeah, great. Take the slides down now. And I can see Dean is back on screen as well. So we're going to go over now to the audience questions. Um, so uh, let's pull these up. So um, question, first of all, from Lucy saying in the past that she's made some connections, but was wanting some advice around what um, to ask of those connections. So it's like you've made contact with some brilliant people by the sounds of it. What advice do the panel have on what kinds of things are appropriate, I guess, to ask of connections that you're making? Aston, do you want to start with you? Yeah, sure. Um, so I think 
it's kind of this is a really bespoke depends what you want from from who who those all of those people that you've met because I think like for me currently I'm not looking for a new job so if I went to a networking event I would be looking for like-minded people to chat with or perhaps a mentor or something it's not always about looking for a job necessarily um the lights have just gone off again um so I think you like people are really as we've said before people are really nice and people are willing to deem touched on it very well people love to talk about themselves so if you're sort of feeling a bit nervous to start with of what to ask for them just ask to hear about their journey hear how they've got to where they are obviously you approach them because you probably admire them and you like their sort of career trajectory so literally just say can you tell me how you how you've got to where you've got to and listen to their story engage with their story ask questions um and ask for advice people love to give advice as well so they love to sort of talk okay. you through their opinion on how to deal with a challenge how they would deal with a challenge so i think yeah depending on what you want out of the question it is really di different on for different people but i think just really get them to talk to you and get them to sort of do the work because people do like talking about themselves that's great so asking them for their career journey for inspiration mm -hmm. ask them to be a mentor um asking them for top tips that's great dean i guess in your world in tv and film i guess it i mean i'd love your perspective it's maybe slightly different because it might be much more of a specific ask you want of someone what what do you think i, th I think it, it's twofold i think you should know what you want to get out of that interaction whether it's you know to be considered for a job uh, or to have your CV added to the file or to meet up to talk about, you know, opportunities or, you know, have your stuff passed on. Um, but I think the second thing which is really important is, you know, don't ask for something which isn't in someone's gift. So, you know, if you drop me an email and you send me your CV, uh, you know, if you ask me to make you the director general of the BBC, it ain't going to happen because, you know, <laughs> I can't do that. Um, and uh, I think I fancy the role next anyway. Um, but, you know, I, I think... Yeah, to ask, be really clear about what you want to get out of that interaction, because also, you know, people are going through loads and loads of emails. And actually, if it's just a case of, you know, could you connect me to this one person? You know, it's easy. Forward, put them the email address in and send it over. Um, but then, yeah, just be very mindful that you're not over asking or asking for something which they're not able to do. Yeah, that's great advice. Zara, I'm going to move over to you for the next question, which has come from the Beckers. Um, which says, sorry for the Zoom name, it was supposed to be two of us. They've obviously lost their partner on the call. But um, so your thoughts are on how often you should contact someone and what's the balance between being kind of hungry and proactive and getting in touch with someone? And when does it kind of tip into being irritating? Yeah, I think we've said a little bit earlier on this, but obviously the natural thing is that people do become busy and Sometimes if someone, if you've reached out to someone, and they've not got back to you and they've read it and they've not replied, um, as an example, particularly on platforms like, you know, like our platform on LinkedIn, where, you know, you can be getting a lot of messages. It's just being, um, I think it's just being mindful of that person's time and thinking actually like, you know, there's probably, you know, there might be a reason they've not got back to you yet. Um, so like, yeah, maybe if I was reaching out to someone and there was like a specific ask that I had, I would probably give it, a, you know, a good few weeks before I then chase that person, um, particularly when it's kind of, someone who um, I don't know that don't know particularly well and it happens to me sometimes where people message and then they've then nudged me and I've just realized I've not replied and I felt awful mm -hmm. and there's no there's not actually a specific reason why I've done that apart from just you know being a little bit disorganized with that kind of inbox and that up in, and in keeping but I do like to get back to get back to people um so yeah I think there's no right like right or wrong way but as Aston said it's, it's about different goals that you have and and as Dean said as well, it's about then what's in that person's control. Like as an example, if you don't have a job opening up at a, in a company, it's going to be really difficult for that person to suddenly just make a role appear in a, in a company. Um, however, if you then build that relationship, you can then be front of mind when that does happen. Um, so actually I think not putting that pressure on that person to you know, magically make something happen, which is really difficult, and actually just using it to get to know that person um, you know saying you know yes to kind of lots of different um, opportunities perhaps for that person to begin with will then keep you front of mind and that doesn't matter mean that you need the job straight away either some people that I met really early on just through you know networking putting myself out there in events volunteering then like years later now like we're connected and we're now you know we might partner on something else um, and I think you learn 
you know quite quickly that it's a small world so you do then um kind of see these people again as well no, I think that's, I think that links to a really good point that Aston made earlier, which is, you know, you make that connection. It may not literally be for a job tomorrow, but you know, in a yes. few years, couple of roles down the line, sometimes that connection can can come around to to suddenly think of you for an appropriate role. So, um, yeah, I think that's a good point. Um, I can see actually our CEO Josie has said something about answering this question live. Josie, did you want to say something? Or maybe I don't know if that was. <laughs> right, we'll up in a minute um the next question um i think a lot of people want to talk about is around imposter syndrome we've got a question from charlie um around how you get over imposter syndrome um so i wonder i think this is something that we've all experienced at some point in our lives um what what do the panel think about that dean maybe start with you i think <laughs> imposter syndrome yeah, I mean, the, I think the the issue of imposter syndrome is that, but I mean, it's it's causes are quite broad and kind of like multimodal. So it's like, I think, and a lot of it is also out of your control, like the environment that's created within like the sector and stuff like that. So I think to an extent, you're never going to be able to kind of solve those things. You just have to change your mindset. And actually, I mean, I found that. The, the kind of best way to get over imposter syndrome is, and I don't know, this might not be helpful advice actually, um, yeah. but it's to sort of like, to throw you're yourself- You're gonna say it anyway. Oh, you're gonna say it anyway, and then um, you know, maybe redact it later. So uh, stay tuned folks. Um, but to kind of throw yourself into it and then sort of prove to yourself that you can do it, if that makes sense. Like, I think a lot of it is, you know, whilst the, the, the causes are very there and that there's, you know, it's not sort of made up in your mind, I think a lot of it is just sort of not thinking that you have the, you know, the capacity to kind of do those things. So when you kind of throw yourself into it and, and kind of hope for the best, but I mean, I sort of still have elements of imposter syndrome today, you know, so. Um, yeah, 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 even me today, I thought the same. I thought, why do people want to listen to me on this talk? <laughs> what do I actually have to say? And I think most of us think it all the time. And I always say to people at work, we're all just sort of pretending to know what we're doing. Um, and massively, I think even like as we've changed roles, I always think that and, um, it's kind of like that niggling voice in your head. But I think pretty much everyone you speak to um, admits that and says, yeah, I've got it. Mm. And I think just don't let it stop you from trying something, I think. Exactly. Because, like, once you get into the experience, you, you start to realise that, A, everybody else, you know, no one really knows what's going on. I think you're right there. Yeah. Um, but also, B, it's like, you know, you are better uh, at, you know, that imposter syndrome is, is often um, ill-placed because actually you're better at doing things than you think you are. Yeah, that's great advice. Um, a question is, I think, specifically relating to LinkedIn. So maybe Aston, this is one for you from Marcus saying, is it cheeky to connect with someone you don't know just because you work in a similar industry? Like, do you always have to like make, I guess, message them or make an introduction? Um, or can you just connect to them just because you're interested in their pathway? What's the kind of etiquette around that? Yeah, no, not at all. I don't think it's cheeky to connect with people you don't know. Um, I obviously, Zara, just in the training we took you through and rock your profile, Zara did say like, if you are looking to build that genuine connection and keep it going, then always say something um and I know you might think oh, I don't really know what to say but even saying like I had someone connect with me the other day I don't know him don't know any don't know the company he works for don't have any mutual connections but he just messaged me saying I looked at your profile and I really admired your um career choices or career trajectory can we connect and yeah of course and just the fact he said something really nice which was made me feel okay maybe maybe I'm doing something right was just a really nice way to sort of break break the ice and he didn't want anything he just wanted to yeah connect with me oh that's a really great example um i just i just i, I know i'm not the linkedin expert here but i just uh, i want to add to that as well like i get requests from people just across like television all the time um and like i accept them because of the stuff that they have on their profile which you know they they seem to be able to bring me like you know, it seems like they're offering me some sort of value. For example, like I got um, a message from someone a few weeks ago who was interested in becoming a presenter um, and kind of like sent us a show reel and their profile looks really interesting. So we had a Zoom chat and then we're going to go meet uh, in real life in a few um, 
a few weeks time and then also uh, been getting messages from people who run production music business library like libraries and they see that I've done like producing directing they've got it very clear in their profile and stuff and someone emailed me last week from Paris and was like I've got a production library and I was like I'm looking for a production library right now actually so yeah I, I think um there's elements of like serendipity there but you know I think it is quite helpful as long as you're very clear about you know who you are and what you um what you're about yeah, that's quite a good segue to um next question from Katie, which is a nice positive question. I think we focus a lot on some of the challenges around networking. And Katie's asking, um, what is your what is your favorite aspect about networking? And just while you all think, I'm just gonna start building on what you just said, Dean. I think my favorite aspect of networking is is sometimes the random connections and what they can bring to you. I kind of, as someone who's just recently done a big career change, it is it is very satisfying sometimes when there's a connection in your network that suddenly kind of it all comes about and then it leads to something great um and I think that's one of the things I really love about it anyone else want to go next what they love about it yeah I think just like you said it can open up really weird and wonderful opportunities just by keeping kind of networks warm and actually Aston and I work in a project at the moment with um, a 19 year old entrepreneur who reached out to me on LinkedIn he sent me this really kind of um, cool message about a project he's working on and I actually read it and I was on holiday and I didn't reply and he chased me three days later and I thought oh at me and you know the, and there was a, there was urgency to get for us to do it and I thought oh no I will respond I responded and now we're working on this super cool project he's absolutely hilarious um, and that's you know and that's just through someone randomly reaching out um, but I've had that all throughout my career I think the people that you can meet randomly can just open up and if you say yes to those opportunities as well um but just by say I'm, I always say to people early stages in their career if you have the time and it's of interest just say yes and do it and put yourself out there I think that's going to open up some really cool stuff yeah I yeah I agree and th I think there's various things I like about networking and I think I love meeting new people so like in real life networking I just love hearing people's stories I love I'm guilty of it I love talking about myself <laughs> I love I love to tell a story maybe not talking about myself but I love to tell a story so anyone that will listen great um, and then also I think I just love the sort of opportunity that it opens up so when I applied for the role I'm in now at LinkedIn um, the job had shut so the I wasn't able to apply basically through my network it turns out that my old boss knew Zara so my old boss messaged Zara to say hey um I have someone could you can she apply I know she's a bit late and lo and behold I'm here now um because yeah. I was able to get my CV through the back door um and 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 get an interview so I think it's just the possibilities it opens up are amazing yeah I think it is definitely great I mean I think that the best thing for me, for, it, it, it is actually genuinely fun, I think. I mean, it, it's like you're having a conversation in a very nice kind of relaxed social environment. I really enjoy it, to be fair. I mean, I know it's the session's called Take the Cringe Out of Networking, but I love it. I think it's great. You get to meet new people and you don't know where the conversation's going to go or what opportunity is going to turn up next. And also I love as well is I love networking sideways as well as networking up. I think that's really Ooh. important. Tell us what sideways versus upwards is. Go on. So like sideways is like just networking with people who are on the same level as you, right. rather than kind of networking <laughs> upwards to like yeah. people who are like execs and stuff like that. And I think the best thing about that is that I think that's when the true moments of like kind of you know creative flair can spark, because actually you know these are people who you're all going to be moving up at the same time as as each other, and just finding out you know you can have a night. Nice, those are the opportunities to really have a nice bit of a bitch as well. You can be like oh, what about this place or that place, um. But it, it, you know, there's a lot of opportunities that come out of that too as well as kind of networking up so um yeah yeah that, that's a, a really good point I never heard of it called networking sideways but I think that is that is so true like building building your building a kind of network around you of your peers I think is definitely really really great career mm -hmm. advice isn't it um the only thing I would say as well I guess that for some people obviously if you know you're more introverted which is also awesome you know um you know, I don't know all our personality types, but sometimes, you know, it's easy for people, you know, kind of extra to march up to someone. But actually, again, if you are feeling, you know, that's not necessarily something you enjoy doing, again, it's um, thinking about, okay, how can I make this as easy as possible for me? Like, is there one person I can go and talk to, you know, who's, you know, who's standing on their own in the bar, rather than just like jumping into a group of people and just sort of doing it slowly. And also using LinkedIn to perhaps set yourself up for success there as well. 
um, and sort of you know knowing yourself and knowing that it's okay to do it in different ways not everyone can kind of be um kind of marching up to people <laughs> yeah no I think I think that is a really valid point but I think that it's also worth bearing in mind on that that whilst a lot of people can you, you can sometimes think people with more extrovert personalities and that networking is really easy for them but actually I think when we were talking a couple of minutes ago we're all suffering from imposter syndrome or have done at yeah. various points and just because someone can come across as being very confident it doesn't necessarily mean that inside they're not also finding this really um, nerve-wracking so um, I think that's also worth bearing in mind as well um, right sorry there's lots of questions coming in here um, I'm getting distracted um, a very specific question about photos on LinkedIn which I know Zara you kind of touched on around um, a question from Chrissy saying it can be challenging if you feel you're not attractive Chrissy I'm sure that's not true um or have no confidence what's your kind of advice around the photo? I find photos on LinkedIn they vary wildly don't they some people take quite creative approaches or do them more like graphics or like I don't know what's what's your view on how to do that yeah I think um again firstly as you said I'm sure that is wildly untrue and everyone feels like you know feels like that in a way again about showing their photos that's just a common truth that people don't necessarily like putting themselves out like that like that as well um and I think that's your opportunity this is your space and your opportunity to connect with people and for your um for you to have you know a career or the work life that you want and we know that people showing photos on LinkedIn to having that photo just helps people feel like the profile is real and then it builds kind of that authenticity to them um, and it's a bit of a strange one, isn't it? Because I suppose on CVs and, you know, keeping it anonymous, we've always sort of had that in, built in our heads that actually, you know, why should you put that on there? But really, it's just about people then recognising you and, you, you know, having that as part of your kind of, again, part of your story. And, you know, it's a shame for you to, you know, you shouldn't miss out on that. Um, and I think that's the main thing to keep in mind. This is, like, you know, for you to kind of embrace and you to use LinkedIn to make your yeah to make your opportunities happen I don't know if the other guys have any other better advice um for me because I don't know if that was particularly useful no, got, <laughs> LinkedIn is consistently awful so I'm not the best yeah. person to ask <laughs> yeah I think it's only in like television which is effectively which is sort of all about kind of creativity like without going mm. you know too mad you know I didn't see like fan or anything but I think you know <laughs> it's a nice opportunity to show a bit of like creative flair but I mean I guess the thing about it which is you know you can sort of show as much or as little as you want and I don't mean clothing there but I mean like you know is it like an, a headshot you know you smiling you know but no one's going to meet you and feel like they've been catfished because it's not dating you know so yeah. um <laughs> you, know, you have to control the, uh, like what you kind of go in with and and I don't think, you know, don't think too heavily, highly about it because I don't think anyone's looking at the picture, and hopefully not looking at the picture to decide, you know, who they're going to um, employ or work with or connect. Exactly. It's all about the details underneath. Yeah, absolutely. And it's more just about them people think, oh, that's that person I met or having that kind of link. But like Dean's saying, that could be, you know, an artistic shot of, of whatever. It doesn't need to be, you know, this is just kind of, advice of what we say just for people building up their kind of professional page but yeah it can be what you make of it as well people have you know also people have really creative cover photos as well there's a whole selection you can now google and find and people make their pro you know change up and it's all about kind of you and what you want to say yeah okay i'm conscious of time so i'm gonna ask i think we're probably gonna sort of wrap up a bit now so i'd love to ask the panel just What's your final parting word or parting piece of advice on networking before we do a close? Aston, start with you. <laughs> um, I think mine probably just be confident um, and try not to get too upset or knocked back by, these are more than a few words, um, try not to get <laughs> too caught up or upset or knocked back by people not responding because it's not they're not not responding because they don't like you or they've seen your profile and they think oh absolutely not probably because they're busy or they they've dropped their kids to school and forgot that they'd seen that message two seconds ago and then need a nudge so yeah just be really confident and don't get hung up on on no responses great advice who wants to go next dean yeah i think um have fun with it um, and be open to the conversations and to the opportunities that it can bring you. So don't go into kind of prescriptive, 
or you know too scripted or anything like that because actually you know there's some wonderful things that can come out of it that you didn't even know you know existed I think the final one is just a kind of like a small bugbear that always follow up. Oh my gosh, always follow up. The amount of people who have like taken my email address at events and be like, I'll contact you. I just never hear from them again. I'm like, what's the mm. point of that? You know, even if you don't get a reply, you know, just by being in their e- inbox, you know, it just keeps them, keeps you in their mind. But yeah, definitely, it's like the easiest thing to do. Um, but loads of people just don't do it. Thanks. Very true. Yeah, and I think mine is just, um, well, actually, I remember a great um, quote, which is um, from a book and podcast that I really recommend by, um, it's called Squiggly Careers, and there's, it's by Sarah Ellis and Helen Tupper, I'm sure some people already heard it already, um, but we've worked with them um, quite a lot, and they've obviously got a great book, their podcast is amazing for building confidence, all deep dives into all of this in so much detail, so I'd 100% recommend listening to those if you can. Um, and what one thing I think that I remember hearing years ago from them was that think of networking as um, people helping other people versus like this really scary thing and really like just being a helpful person and bringing that to the conversation, whatever kind of level you are, is always going to be then adding value and they will see that and then you can get it in return. And I think, yeah, that's kind of one big point. My other point would be just like, don't overthink it and, you know, put, you know, put yourself out, put yourself out there because it's your opportunity. Um, so, yeah. Oh, someone's knocking on my door. I'll, hop, I'll stop there. They shut me up. <laughs> That's your well done martini arriving for you. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Rebranding networking to be people helping people. I think that is that is a, a great way to, to end this session. And big thank you for all of you for helping um, our community and providing such brilliant advice and insight um, tonight on how to navigate networking. Um, we know how busy you all are, so we, we really, really appreciate it. Um, I'm sorry that we couldn't answer every single question tonight, but I feel like we've covered a huge amount of ground. Um, there will be a write-up available as usual, which we'll recap. We're also recording this so we can share it um, for anyone who wants to watch again or has missed it. Um, I also just want to flag our next masterclass that is coming up. Thank you. Laura's putting it up there. Um, Our next masterclass will be on the 31st of March at 5.30. Um, It's with our partners, McLaren Racing, the F1 team. um, And it's going to be looking at the different creative careers within their team. So if you are interested in uh, design or merchandising or licensing or branding, um, or any areas um, around that, then please join us. It's going to be absolutely incredible insight from um, people within the McLaren team and is free as usual. Um, so with that, I just want to say a big thank you again to all of our panellists and all of the Creative Access team behind the scenes. And hopefully we'll see you in the March Masterclass as well. So thank you. Have a great evening. Well, Bye, just everyone. Quickly. I'm, um, I'm on LinkedIn. You can find me on LinkedIn. Yeah. All those people in the chat. And Luna as well, if you email me on LinkedIn, I'll answer your question too. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.